So the big news coming out of Commander's Park is they have decided to place Emmanuel Forbes, the second-year corner, on the injured list as he will have a surgery to repair a torn UCL. He has a banged-up thumb. He's going to have surgery on his thumb. Hey, I, you know what? Did I have that something in common he... with Forbes. I remember I had the, the, the weird clicky thumb like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't cover anybody, but we both had injured thumbs. Did that happen when he grabbed McMillan's face mask <laughs> in the sure. middle of the field? I'm not sure if that was the root cause of it or not. Uh, but he will not be out on the field this Sunday no. or probably for the next at least four, four Sundays. Four games, right? Um Look, he, he had a PFF grade of 33.5 in his performance against Tampa. Mm-hmm. He was benched. Look, this is his second coaching staff to bench him. He got benched by Ron Rivera, who picked him. Yeah, It it looks like a horrible pick in hindsight. When you look at what Christian Gonzalez has done, who was picked one pick after him, I believe, in mm-hmm. the draft. When you look at what Joey Porter Jr. has done in Pittsburgh, I'm pretty sure he was the first pick of the second round, second round in yeah. that same draft. All he did in week one this year was go down and, and lock down Drake London. Yeah. And he did nothing. So, did they have to do the surgery now? Probably not. But it's, I was listening to JP Finley's uh, podcast, Beltway Football, on the way in. It's a convenient time to get it done. To, to shelve him. Maybe, you know, maybe he can restore his confidence. And, but, it's just not working out with Emmanuel Forbes. Yeah. So you don't want to write off a guy after a rookie season plus one game. Right. But I think a lot of the fans have written him off. Yeah. And I might be jumping on that pile, too. It's probably not going to work out for Emmanuel Forbes. He's a Ron Rivera pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say you can say that for 80% of the last four drafts, yeah. probably. And now, the, the encouraging thing is Noah Igbenine, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I think that's pretty close. He stepped in when Forbes went to the sideline, and he performed pretty well. He had a PFF grade of 72.3. He was the second highest PFF graded player on Washington's defense last week. Now, I know that's not great because their defense got shredded and got annihilated by the Bucs. Yeah. But you're, you're trying to find... One of the few find, bright spots. You're trying to find some silver linings here. Yeah, and Dan Quinn and obviously Joe Witt came from Dallas. Right. They know this guy because he also came from Dallas. Mm-hmm. So He's a former first-round pick? Yep. It's um 30th pick in 2020, so he's got talent. It's not a big loss in terms of um, you know, possibly beating the Giants, but you know, maybe for depth it, it hurts you a little bit. But I think they'll be fine. It's, it's not a huge loss. If you want to chime in 800-636-1067, it may just be a move of convenience so that they can get Noah on the field and you don't have to hear anything about, well, what's going on with Forbes? Well, now you know. He's on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this kid can play. Former first-round pick, drafted 30th overall in 2020. It's going to be interesting to see. (sighs) See kind of flipping it over, going to the offensive side, how early and often they get McLaurin involved. Because last week, you know, Tampa had some injuries uh, during the game. They lost at least a couple of mm-hmm. defensive backs, if not three. Um, and McLaurin, you know, he was just shut down for the entire game. I, what did he finish with? Two catches? I think two catches for 17 yards. It'll be interesting to see how early Kingsbury goes to him. Oh, I think he's got to go. And Eckler. I think Eckler and, and McLaurin need to be targeted a bunch early both, in this game. Yeah, they're both going to have bigger roles. They have to. No doubt. Yeah. Did you hear Kingsbury yesterday talk about what he described as the worst play call of his life? I did hear that, yes. So he was referring to the second touchdown run from Jaden Daniels. Mm-hmm. It's a touchdown run. You'd think it was a good play, but basically he said, I didn't give him a check at the line to check out of it, and it wasn't a great look. But Jaden, just being as talented as he is, was still able to run it in despite the fact that the defense kind of had that play covered. Mm -hmm. They probably learned a lot on film this week based on what they saw. So I I think that things, I don't know if be drastically different, but things are going to be different early in this game. I don't think you're going to see Jaden, you know, running as much as he did 
Um, I think they're going to target McLaurin early. I think they're going to target Eckler early. Um, maybe they give Robinson more more carries. We'll see. But the one thing that I do, I, I am kind of concerned about the fact that the Giants' defensive line um, did not get to Sam Darnold last week, and they right. got a couple guys who can get after sure. And I'm sure they've worked on stuff this week, too, mm-hmm. to try and take advantage. Burns of, and Thibodeau, I would expect to be heavily involved. So I think they're going to be active, and they'll probably be a factor. I just don't think offensively they're good enough to, to beat Washington, but we'll see. It'll be a bad loss. Sam Fortier had a good breakdown in the Washington Post in his latest column, and it was kind of a retort to Thomas Boswell's column. So I think we mentioned Boswell's column in the Washington Post yesterday or the day before that he wrote that if Jaden Daniels runs – like he has in the first week, every week, he will shatter. That essentially was what he was positing. 14 runs too much. Well, Fortier went through all the runs, and he says in the end, Daniels took just four hits while running. Three were on design runs, Mm -hmm. and one was on a scramble that was flagged for being helmet to helmet. Mm -hmm. He also took two hits on sacks in the pocket. But in terms of all of the runs – he didn't take that many hits. I, I it just takes he, one. It does take one, but he. I thought he did a pretty good job of protecting himself, going down when he could, finding the out-of-bounds marker when he could. Like, I thought he did a pretty good job, of, especially for a rookie, mm-hmm. making his debut. He didn't get caught in a lot of bad situations where he was just going to get punked by the defense. Yeah. So that was encouraging, but I agree. 16 carries seems like a lot. It and is it's, a lot. It's just not going to happen. I don't think he had 16 carries in the game at all last year at LSU. Right. The year before his first year at LSU, yeah, mm-hmm. he had a bunch. He, they used him a lot more. Right. Or maybe he was just scooting and looking to run a lot more in his first year at LSU. Mm-hmm. But last year he didn't have 16 carries in a game, I don't believe. And, you know, even if he's taking four or five hits, and it, it only takes one cakes. And if he's going to take four or five hits a week at the way he's built, yep. it's one of them is going to end his game. Mm-hmm couple of injury notes as we get ready for week two against the Giants. Um, first of all, Noah Brown may play. They say he's up to speed. But on the injury front, Johnny Newton, Dan Quinn says, is trending in the right way. He, of course, was second-round pick defensive tackle. Um, we mentioned Emmanuel Forbes. He's been sidelined. And tight end Zach Ertz. I guess they just give him rest days. You got a rest day sure. on Wednesday. He's a, he's a vet. Is he 33 or 34? Give give that guy some rest when he needs it. He's a veteran. He's been in the league forever. I got no problem with uh, them giving a guy like that a rest day. I see it all throughout the league. Man, they were just – the Giants were just so bad offensively, though, last week. I mean, they can't be this bad back-to-back or, weeks. Or, or could they be? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they are, I think you're going to see Daniel Jones sit in the bench in week right. three. I Neighbors really do. popped up on the injury report yesterday with a with a knee issue, but I saw reports that that might have also been just like a maintenance type of day where they're just kind of resting and heading into the game. He's a rookie. You wouldn't think he would need a maintenance day, so mm-hmm. who knows who to believe. We can ask Paul Dottino about that. Uh, the guy I'd be worried about is Wandale Robinson, who's a real safety valve for – Daniel Jones, and look, we saw Sanders still struggle covering Chris Godwin. Wandale Robinson is a quick, shifty guy that's going to work out of the slot. That's mm-hmm. going to be a tough matchup for a rookie. Hopefully, Sanders still bounces back and is able to somewhat limit him. That's going to be a guy that Daniel Jones is looking to. One of the 12, game. 12 targets last week. Yeah. Yep. And One I think th- Darius Slayton got hurt last week. He did get banged up, so you would think Wandale Robinson's role expands even a little bit more if Slayton is limited or can't play. One of the supposed strengths of the New York Giants is their pass rush. Mm -hmm. They traded for Brian Burns. They have Kayvon Thibodeau, who finished with 11 and a half sacks last year. Could be a challenge for the commander's offensive line. PFF came out with their grades. The 33rd team came out with their grades. The offensive line actually performed admirably if Mm -hmm. you look at week one. Yeah. According to PFF, Cornelius Lucas was one of the best tackles right. in all of football in week one. I would love to see Thibodeau get stoned for two reasons. One, he's had a lot of success against Washington in his short career so far. Two, I just think he's kind of a punk. Because if you saw him after the loss last week to the Vikings in the locker room, when somebody from the press asked him about 
the defensive line's role in letting the, the Vikings steamroll them and rack up 28 points. Mm-hmm. He basically just said, next question, not gonna, not even going to address that. Right. So, like, do you take ownership when you play poorly and your team plays poorly? Apparently not. So you're anti-Thibodeau. Well, I, I would just like to see the commanders run the ball his way and to see him get trucked. I'd like to see that. I do want to see how the line holds up because, all right, Lucas, who – we're kind of expecting to be a backup if Brandon mm-hmm. Coleman's healthy. Yeah. Coleman ended up playing 14 snaps in the game. So Lucas took the majority of the snaps. He graded out at basically an 86. Love that. Pass blocking grade, which was sixth amongst all the tackles I mean, that's, in week one. That's very encouraging. And PFF had the team ranked 14th, well, which is above average. That's a huge win for, for an offensive line heading into the season that was getting graded pretty much in the 30s. <laughs> like, 30 to 32, somewhere in that range. And then the 33rd team does their own rankings. Yeah. In pass protection, they had the commanders 19th. So right in the middle of the pack. Hmm. Not terrible. It's still better than a lot of the predictions had them. And hopefully, you know, they just gel as they keep playing together, have more cohesiveness, you know, through weeks two later into the season and get better. I mean, hopefully the guys that they added in the off season and then maybe Coleman once he comes in mm-hmm. a young guy really uplift this offensive line as i thought Jaden who did t- he, look he took off and ran a bunch mm-hmm. but he actually by the statistics was only pressured 8 times yeah which is not well, terrible so offensively like i said i think you're going to see McLaurin a lot early i'll I be think, disappointed i think you're going to see Eckler more if McLaurin doesn't have 9 to 10 targets i i mean you have to target your best receiver. 100%. 100%. Especially for a young signal caller. And let's see if Kingsbury moves him around a little bit. I, might, I, I mean, that's, I know that's not his MO. I don't know if I would count on seeing that. You, I'm just saying, yeah. you, you never know. Because they probably saw things on film where, mm-hmm. hey, we can take advantage of this, this, and this. Right. Especially with some of the injuries. Because I believe one of the, the linebackers, Nick McLeod, got hurt last week, okay. too, for the, for the Giants. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's a question mark. But um, Minnesota, Aaron Jones ran for – almost 100 yards right he was averaging almost seven yards per carry mm-hmm. i just think they can kind of take advantage of that sure. with whether it's robinson or eckler or, i'd love to see eckler with 10 to 12 touches yeah. i think Maybe you got a, a little dub- bit more i think you got to double eckler's touches from last week absolutely I, lo- I love that last week it was six get him 12 to 14 touches that's sweet spot at minimum 10 to 12 yeah. if not more 100 